Hi folks, Robert Quigley here, Washington DC, the Money Pit Group. We're on the road to the White House. In the video today, we're going to talk about two main subjects. We're going to talk about the Federal Reserve and the money supply, and we're going to talk about taxes. All throughout my adult life, and over many, many hours in finance and, and surfing the internet and running across uh, one YouTube video after another, uh, complaining about uh, the floating currency system versus uh, the uh, the pre-Nixon uh, currency tied to gold system. Uh, you know, it, it occurred to me recently that you know there are a lot of Americans that have overcomplicated a very simple issue, and and I think part of what's going on is money for a lot of folks is very hard to come by. It's not free. We have to actually go out and find it, i.e. find a job. Then we have to do something for it, i.e. do some work or sell some product. And then we finally get some money. So what's happened over time is there's been this sort of crazy uh, 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 a concept around money that has developed. Let, let, let's clear all that away. The purpose of this video is, is to put the modern monetary system into very simple, accurate terms. Something that's easy to understand. We all know what a hamburger is. We all know what a car is. We all know what uh, getting a car wash is. We're talking about products and services. We understand if there are lots of cars in the world and fewer buyers, the price is coming down. We also understand the opposite. If there are a few cars in the environment and there are lots of buyers, the price of that car is going to go up. It's the same if you're, if you're hiring the local car wash to, to wash your car. If there's a line of cars every day, uh, then that uh, car wash owner is going to raise his price, obviously. Well, money in modern terms is no different. Uh, but the supplier of the money, of course, is the Federal Reserve. And, and there's all kinds of spooky, wooky, wacky videos about uh, uh, what the Federal Reserve is and what it isn't. But let's just make it very, very simple. The Federal Reserve supplies money to the U.S. economy. They raise interest rates. That means they're taking money out of the U.S. economy. Uh, if, if they are not providing accommodation, uh, that means they're, they're taking money out of the economy and so forth. So essentially, the Federal Reserve is controlling the supply of money in the economy. Ford Motor Company is, is determining the supply of Ford automobiles and trucks in the economy. And Burger King and McDonald's is determining the supply of Whoppers and Big Macs in the U.S. economy. There is an equivalency here, and this is the very important thing to understand, is the Federal Reserve, if they put too much money into the economy, that means everybody's got more in their pocket, and then, of course, they can go out and chase products and services. So that means they pushed up the demand for products and services by putting more money in the economy. And what happens when you push up demand for products and services? Well, the price of things go up. Now the, now, the opposite is also true. If the Federal Reserve takes money out of the economy, for example, uh, by the government raising taxes, okay, that's a classic, simple way of taking money out of the economy. Raising interest rates is, is the Federal Reserve's task. That makes borrowing money more costly, but it's another way of saying it's taking money out of the system. So what we have in 2022, and this is going to be with us for a couple of years because people don't understand what's going on, is we simply have an imbalance in the society between the amount of money available and the amount of products and services avail available. So when we have a mismatch, what that means is uh, if there's too little products and services and too much money, the price is going up, and of course vice versa. If uh, if, if uh, there are way too many cars and way too many services available and uh, 
the price is going to go down. So that that's the same. Uh, it's the, so so that's the equivalence, equivalency we're trying to talk about here. And there's a relationship between money availability, the amount of money in the society, and the amount of products and services. So at the moment, the government has got it wrong. Uh, we have too much money in the society, and we don't have uh, enough uh, products and services to spend it on. So how do we solve the problem? Well, obviously interest rates have to go up, and taxes are going to have to go up, not on everybody. This is the key point. Taxes are going to have to go up in the places where gargantuan profits are being made. Oil, oil companies, for example. Uh, well, we're going to talk about taxes in the second part of this video, uh, but that's just a primer. So Wall Street has, has made an absolute fortune off of this situation. Uh, all these commodity providers and all these commodity traders, uh, folks that, that take home uh, uh, eight-figure salaries, you know, uh, six-figure salaries, seven-figure salaries every single uh, year, uh, they have just benefited wildly uh, from this, this mismatch between the amount of money in the society and the amount of product and services in the society. So we have to use the tax system to reduce uh, the amount of uh, money in the society or and or at the same time we have to produce the increase the number of goods and services to bring the situation the economy back into balance so hopefully that catches the essence okay so what that means is as the population expands as the amount of resources available to consume and use uh, expand or contract, and we're in a contraction, contraction stage right now, the Federal Reserve's job is to align the money supply with the actual supply of products and services available in the market. Uh, so, so that's it. The whole idea of the gold standard in the pre-Nixon years, uh, that is history. And that's not coming back, and there's no need to think about it for a single moment. And the, the, the videos and the people who look at the uh, Federal Reserve and think that they're somehow ripping off uh, the, the, the American folks is uh, only true in the sense of inflation. Uh, and, and it's telling us that they have got that balance between the actual cash and products and services out of balance. Uh, but that can't last long. They know they've got to fix it, and they are in the process of fixing it. Okay, let's move on to the to the next topic, um, and that oh, it, let me finish up one thing. Uh, speculators, uh, we've got uh, we've got to fix this problem as well. I've talked about it in a couple of videos. I really need to devote an entire uh, video to the speculators. But the the other driver in this inflation issue and the oversupply of money issue is we let speculators plow money into trading gold and, and wheat and soybeans and corn and all kinds of industrial metals, natural gas, heating oil, and so forth. And they never touch the commodity. Uh, but because Wall Street is allowed to pump money into uh, the commodity sector without ever using it, then essentially uh, it's the same supply and demand uh, uh, equation. Uh, Wall Street knew that the stock prices had to come down because they were pumped up during the pandemic years. So they took their money out of stocks. They sold them at very high profits to people who didn't know what they were doing. And then they, they stuffed that money into the commodity sector, which, of course, has, has driven up the price of commodities. And in the case of oil, uh, the derivative chemicals of oil uh, are found in literally hundreds of thousands of products, not to mention just transportation, whether it's automobile, bus, planes, etc., or oil for your, 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 your transportation vehicles, etc. Uh, the, the problem is rampant speculation in the futures market, in commodities, is letting a incorrect, dangerous, lethal amounts of, of uh, participation, speculation, uh, to drive supply and demand so far out of balance that not only the, the, U, the U.S., but the whole world suffers from it. Uh, so that's going to have to be a big area of reform. And if you've seen my other videos, you know Wall Street is going to take it on the chin as soon as we get to the White House. 
just as sure as I'm making this video that reform is going to happen. Okay, let's move on to taxes. So, so taxes, it, it, it fits in this same equation because the country so far, since the early 1900s when the income tax was introduced, has, had the, has totally messed up the approach to taxes. Now, the, the simple approach has always been, well, gee, uh, everybody should pay a fair share of their taxes. Everybody benefits from the government, so everybody should pay something. Whatever that something is, it's their fair share, let's call it, and we'll throw that into the pot, and uh, that will help pay government expenses. So that very simple concept has driven the entire tax system out of whack. Uh, it, it's running parallel with the whole supply demand discussion that I just had with, with things being out of whack. Uh, we basically we want as many people as possible in America, everybody if possible, every family if possible, to be self-supporting, just like in pre-industrial days in the days of farming communities. If people can take care of themselves without the need or the burden of taking care of strangers, then they don't need to pay taxes. Because remember, paying taxes is taking care of somebody else. It's uh, it, it is paying for, of course, things like police and fire and, and homeless shelters and, and the local government. But we need much less of that if everybody's able to take care of themselves. So the general idea with the tax system is we should stop approaching this from the point of view of what's fair to everybody. We need to first do everything we can within our lawmaking and organizational powers to increase the number of self-providers in America. And that is my 30 million new entrepreneurs program across America. We want individuals and families taking care of themselves. Now the result of that is going to be a reduction in the amount of government in the, the, uh, the society. So right now we're looking at about 21-22% of the American society devoted to um, the government. And if we create 30 million new uh, uh, entrepreneurs, aka small business owners, we can reduce that number to about 15% of, uh, of the economy. And that happens in two ways. Number one is we grow the economy because we're increasing 30 million new entrepreneurs. So we make the economic pie bigger. At the same time, we can lay off more uh, government uh, uh, workers and we can and we can cut back on the amount of government benefit that will not be needed because people are taking care of themselves uh, so that's the basic formula and we need to approach the tax system as to not what is everybody's fair share but what should people pay that are actually making a substantial surplus so for example I've mentioned in another video that we should totally eliminate taxes on everybody making under fifty thousand dollars a year I'm talking about federal taxes state taxes local taxes because if someone has got fifty thousand dollars per year in their pocket let's let's just call it a thousand per week more or less I know it's actually fifty two thousand but it just rounded it off to fifty thousand for for easy conversation but if everyone has got fifty thousand dollars in their pocket per year uh, you know what do the calculations guys that covers all of the basic expenses. We're talking about house, transportation, food, health care, education of their kids, clothes, a bit of entertainment. Now maybe they're not going to Europe for a uh, you know for a month-long holiday, although they would still be able to save money for a decent holiday to the beach or to the mountains to go skiing. Uh, so, so that's where we need to focus the attention. Now somebody who is making uh, you know a million dollars a year, uh, when really, you know, fifty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars will provide what we would call the basic minimum standard of living in America. Well, you know, that person's got nine hundred and nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars surplus, so that person should be paying more. Uh, you know, there's no point in letting a person live like a king or a queen or you know a Rockefeller. You know, using times past, I don't, I don't dislike Rockefeller or his, or his family because I know they currently live and some live in West Virginia. But I, I'm just simply saying that uh, enough is enough, guys. 
Uh, you know, you don't need to be like Bill Gates with, with a gazillion dollars or, or Bezos with a gazillion dollars. Both these guys can have very nice lifestyles or a couple hundred thousand dollars per year. And if they think they need more than that, that that's just self-delusion. That, that's just nonsense. So that's where we need to go with the tax system. So again, just to summarize, we want to create as many self-sufficient people and families as possible. By doing that, we reduce the need for government. We also increase the size of the American economic pie, and then we focus our taxing authority into the, onto the part of society which actually makes and sets on a pretty large, uh, comfortable uh, monetary cushion. And uh, we, we don't allow someone to say, you know, I need a million dollar house. That's my minimum standard. No, if, if the, you know, I, th I think I saw in the paper this morning that, that as of now, after the real estate uh, inflation, uh, the average house in America costs about $406,000. Just a year ago, uh, the average house was about $320,000. And before the pandemic started, the average house was about $270,000. Uh, that's the benchmark, okay? If that's the average uh, selling house price in the country, then that's what uh, that's the standard that everybody needs. Uh, so, so someone who says they want a million dollar house, or or this recent example I've seen where some guy bought a house down in Florida for ninety million last year, and now he's got it on the market for one hundred eighty million. No, 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 no. This is all luxury stuff. You know, that is the part of the economy that needs to be hammered and hammered hard with a tax. Uh, and then of course, you know, you can charge for, for government services. I mean, you can, you can raise money that way. But I'm putting these ideas on the table because what we're doing today is obviously not working. Now, I, I will finish up here with, with, a, with a quick, uh, with a big point that is often overlooked. I think the American public does not understand that their tax dollars are not, in fact, paying uh, the government's expenses uh, on an annual, every year basis. Uh, let me explain, folks. Every single year, the federal government and state and local governments issue bonds. And uh, between the tax dollars they raise, which pretty much at this point is going to pay interest on those bonds, and the money they raise from bonds, and the money they raise from selling government services, uh, that's what pays the bill of government. Um, so if we if we were to uh, to eliminate the income tax, uh, the uh, the whole process uh, is the issuance of bonds, and then when those become mature, new bonds are issued to pay off the old debt, and this just goes on and on and on into perpetuity, and then inflation winds up uh, decreasing the value of the old debt. Which, which essentially pays it off. I mean, that's what pays it off. It's, it's generally not uh, the tax dollars uh, dug out of people's pockets. So I, I don't want to go much beyond that because I know already uh, uh, people are probably uh, scratching their head. Uh, and, and the purpose of this is trying to simplify uh, where our money comes from, how it relates to the goods and services in the economy, how it's actually controlled, and then what's the proper approach for taxes uh, in the United States system. So that's where we're going with these issues, folks. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe. Put your comments below. Join the conversation. Tell me where I'm right and tell me where I'm wrong. You know, I've put up a new website, Robert Quigley for President. Go there. Show your support. Make some donations. Uh, tell your family and your friends. We're headed to the White House. And until we meet again.